What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today. Thought I would be off, but Bravo decided to, you know, give us, a, you know, a, a whole premiere of The Real Housewives of Dallas, which was supposed to premiere on January 5th. So we're here for The Real Housewives of Dallas season five, episode one, and the episode was titled Bursting the Quarantine Bubble. Now you guys, before we even get into this review, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you guys would, it should be in the description. I'm gonna try to remember in the description bar, please go and subscribe to my planner channel. There will be a video up on my planner channel tomorrow for New Year's Day. Um, the channel is Jerome's Planet. But like I said, again, I will hopefully remember to put a link in the description bar below. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys, so I'm gonna start this up with Cameron. It's not much with Cameron, and I'm gonna have to be honest with you guys, I don't particularly like Cameron. Cameron is my least favorite of the Dallas Housewives. She is snooty. You would think she grew up in Dallas society. You, you would just think that. Um, she's the typical Highland Park person that you would see, snooty, uptight, looking down on other people. But Cameron, so, the, um, now I don't remember when they started filming. I know they actually, they were getting ready to start filming right as the pandemic started, but then they stopped production and I think they picked up, I'm trying to remember. Cause there was a sign, cause I saw a sign by, an, by, one of, by my apartment. There was a building, there was not a building. There was a, uh, or was it a restaurant? Was it a, uh, it was a business. And DeAndre was gonna be there. It's, um, I'm not, I can't even, I'm not gonna tell you guys where I live, but yeah. So I don't remember when that was. I know it was hot as hell outside. That much I do know. So back to the show, Cameron. We see her with her kids. They're making sandwiches. Then we find out that Cameron's dog passed away. And Cameron blamed Court for the dog passing away because she went to New York. And while she was in New York, you know, I guess Court forgot to give the dog his medication. So she felt that he was to blame for the dog, you know, dying. And, you know, she resented him for that. But then they did an autopsy on the dog and they can't really find out why the dog died. And then, you know, I think she said six months later, she got another dog and the dog's name is Fancy. She took the dog to a trainer to get trained and they brought, you know, the trainer brought the dog back with that, that big cardboard cut out of the dog's day, put the dog on the treadmill, the dog peed on the treadmill. That's basically it for Cameron. Then, um, actually no, that's not it for Cameron. So actually we saw Cameron, so she was having a garage sale. Now I actually do remember this garage sale because they posted it on social media. But, I, at, and at that point, you know, at that point, that was like, at the, I mean, at, at the highest point of COVID, I saw that, I'm like, they having a fucking garage sale? I mean, I get it, it's outdoors, but a garage sale? No, thank you. No, thank you. Um. So we find out that Cameron is moving out of her house. So she's, so I, um, so okay, she's moving from Highland Park, but I'm pretty sure she's staying in Highland Park. But they're moving out of one house and they're going to another house, her dream house. We are introduced to friend of the show, Jen. So everyone showed up to the garage sale with the exception of Brandy. And we'll talk about Brandy in just a minute. So let's pause here. All right, you guys, so let's talk about Brandy real quick. So we see Brandy. So she has Stephanie come over to her house and you know, Stephanie brings over her boys, Cruz and um, I can't remember what the other one's name is. Cruz and Chance, I remembered it. So she has her sons and you know, Brandy has her girls and her son and they're doing a slip and slide. So then Brandy and, um, and Stephanie sit down and they have a discussion about this video that Brandy did and posted on her Instagram stories, which came back up last season after the reunion was, during the time when the reunion was airing. And it was a Brandy doing it, ugh, I don't know if I wanna do it. Um, I'm not gonna do it, because it's, it's offensive. I'm not gonna do it. 
it was of Brandy, you know, impersonating an Asian person, you know, about about their eyes. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting to me, not Brandy, not her making fun of Asians. It's interesting, I think, because I, I was thinking about that, and I'm like, wow. Because if you guys don't watch CBS, you guys are probably not familiar with Julie Chen. Because Julie Chen, in the early days of Big Brother, her eye, she went and got her surgery on her eyelids. She got surgery on her, on her eyelids. That was one of the things that she did, you know, to make her features look more, I guess, quote unquote, American. It's just really sad when it comes down to, you know, people of different ethnicities, you know, black people, Hispanic people, Asians. When, you know, we try to fit this cookie cutter mold of what is acceptable for white people. I'm not trying to be offensive, but I just hate when we I hate when I see that sometimes. Um, but yeah, Brandy was on a video and I think this video actually came, I, I think the person who, who brought it to light was, um, Leanne Lockins, um, wedding planner, Steve, which he, you know, on his, well, actually his Twitter has been suspended now, but last year when he brought it up, he was doing that in reta retaliation for how they treated Leanne. And I tweeted to him about how I felt. And he, you know, because he was going off on Brandy. I'm like, you went off on Brandy, but you're not checking your girl Leanne because she's, you know, when she was talking about how um, Kara was all Mexican and strong. <laughs> she was Mexican and strong, the chirpy little Mexican, all that shit. Like the difference between, like you brought that up. And Brandy in this scene, she's, you know, she's talking about how she wants to kill herself. And, you know, I know that after film, after the reunion, she went and checked into, you know, a facility. But here's my thing with the difference, and I'm not, I'm not standing up, taking up for either one of them, because what both of them did was wrong. What Brandy did was wrong, and what Leanne did was wrong. But see, with Leanne last season, like what got on my nerves with Leanne was, at the finale, she lied, she was lying, saying she didn't remember saying it, and then, then a minute later, oh yeah, I said it. And then at the reunion, so here's another thing. People come at, have been coming at Andy Cohen about how he came at Monique at the reunion. You guys, do me a favor. Go watch, if you guys have Peacock, go get on Peacock. Go watch the Real Housewives of Dallas reunion season four. Andy Cohen grilled Leanne Locken about her comments about, you know, um, Carrie Brittenham. He grilled her about that shit. He literally grilled her ass about them comments because she said, you know, she slept with Julio Iglesias. She sat in plenty of Mexicans' lap. Now, mind you guys, I don't, I don't, I live in Dallas. I don't know any of these women, but you know, on social media, they do interact. They all interact with me. Every last one of them interact with me. Deandra, Stephanie, Brandy, even Leanne, even Leanne has interacted with me. I've never interacted with Carrie Brittenham. I've interacted with Carrie Duber. I never, I don't think I've ever had a conversation. I don't think I've ever talked to Tiffany Hendra, if that's how you pronounce it. I've never talked to Tiffany. But I've interacted with, you know, the season two cast, without, with the exception of Cameron, because I don't like her. But um, yeah, let's move on from Brandy. Like I said, I don't agree with what Brandy did and I don't agree with what Leanne did. So I don't want nobody to be like, well, if you're going up for Brandy, you should go for Leanne. I'm not condoning either one of their actions. They were both wrong. And it is what it is. I'm moving on. All right, you guys, let's get Tiffany out the way of the new housewife. We didn't have much of a scene with Tiffany. Um, we were introduced to Tiffany through her friend Deandra. Actually, we were introduced to her through Mama D, who I love. I love Mama D. Um, so, like I said, there's not much about Tiffany. Tiffany, we just got her backstory in this episode. So, she has a husband. I, I didn't catch what her husband's name was. She has two daughters. They're twins, Chloe and something. Chloe and Maddie. I'm thinking that's what their names are, Chloe and Maddie. I'm gonna have to go back and double check that. I just didn't get what her husband's name is. Um, so they've been together. I don't. I don't think you even said how long they've been together. But I guess you could kind of get. I, I guess you could. Um, she's a doctor. 
I think she is what Dr. Britton was on Married to Medicine Los Angeles. I think she's a, um, what is Britton? What is Britton? Anesthesiologist. I think she's an anesthesiologist. I think I could be wrong. Now, the cool thing is with her, she got her MD at 23. I'm like, oh, and that's the same year that she met her husband. So I don't know how old she is. I think that, the, I think that picture that I saw, it said 2008. I think it said 08. Okay. But yeah, that is our new housewife, Tiffany. Tiffany Moon, I believe that's her last name. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm, I do think I'm gonna like Tiffany. I really do. Um, so let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next let's discuss Deandra. So, like I said, again, I don't know when these women started filming, but I mean, Texas is, <laughs> and especially Texas and Dallas, and more specifically Texas, you would think COVID is over the way we operate here in Texas. You would think that this shit is over. I think we just, I don't know what phase we're in now, but I know the bars and restaurants are back open and I still don't understand that shit. The first thing that was the first thing to open was the salons because of that that Cracker Jack lady that is actually she's running for some kind of office. She's running for us. I think she's running for Senate because Greg, our governor here, his dumb ass, he felt, you know, he was he was swayed by one measly woman who opened up her salon. But mind you, she went to the press and told the press she was opening up her salon to disobey the um, stay at home orders. I'm not giving that lady any shine over here. So, Mama D, Leanne, I mean, Deandra took over some food for her Mama D because at that time, you know, at this time, whenever they were filming this, I know that, that the bars and restaurants weren't open. You would have to do curbside. So she got food and, you know, we, we found out about the business, the business before COVID, it was doing, you know, doing well. Mama D also gave Deandra $100,000 since, you know, she started to see some change in Deandra. I'm like, wow, it's got to, I'm not trying to be shady or nothing, but damn, Deandra's what, 51 years old and her mama controls her via money. God, I cannot let, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not judging. It's just, it's really interesting, the dynamics between Mama D and Deandra. Oh, I don't know if I could deal with it. So Deandra's a strong person because, I, like I said, I just don't know if I could deal with it with my mama. Me and her would have an issue. It's my trust, but you don't want to give me money out of my trust? Yeah. So, like I said earlier, we are introduced to Tiffany via Deandra. So then they talk about Cam's garage sale. So they're going to show up to Cameron's garage sale together. And then they also, while Stephanie and while they show Stephanie and Brandy talking about Brandy's comment, you know, her video, Tiffany and Deandra are talking about the video because Tiffany is Asian. And, you know, Deandra's standing up for Brandy saying, you know, she don't think she she said, you know, Brand it was ignorant, but you know, she don't think that, you know, Brandy doesn't have a, a bad bone in her body. She, you know, the video was done in poor taste, it really was. And once again, like I said, I'm not here for what Brandy did, and I'm not here for what Leanne did. Both were wrong. I know people wanted Brandy fired, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It wasn't on the show, so there's that. Let's move on and close the episode. All right, you guys, so time for my favorite housewife of Dallas, Stephanie Holman. So we see Stephanie and Stephanie, you know, earlier in the episode, they all did a Skype or um, Skype. What's the other one? What's the other one called? Zoom. Zoom. So she called the ladies, invited them over for um, a, a pool party. So all the ladies show up. We see Brandy. We see the new girl, Jen. We see Tiffany, we see Deandra, we see Cameron, and we see Carrie. So while the girls are hitting it off right out the bat, 
what was so weird was um, Brandy and Jen. They were they compared their vaginas. I was like, wow, very interesting comparing your vaginas. Um, so Carrie gets up at the table, and Carrie wants the girls to tell some of the negative and the positives about COVID and the quarantine for them. I'm just keep it real with you guys. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> I really wasn't listening. It, it, I was, I was taking my notes. So I wasn't paying too much attention to it, but I did hear Brandy address her video and talking about the fact that she tried to commit suicide, and the cameraman is shady as hell because the cameraman kept panning to Tiffany, and her face was like this bullshit here. Um, but you know. Brandy, you know, she was upset and she stepped outside and Tiffany at one point said, you know, you and I, we need to talk one on one. So when Brandy went outside, Tiffany went outside and Kara is out there talking to her, telling her, you know, you're a good person. If people don't want to be friends with you because of that, that's on them. Um, what else? So Tiffany, you know, Stephanie was with Tiffany and Stephanie stepped away so Brandy and Tiffany could talk to each other. And, you know, I do like the fact that Tiffany came to her, you know, as an adult and then be like, you know, it was fucked up what you said. You shouldn't have said that. Sh you shouldn't have said that shit. You shouldn't have done that shit. No. What Tiffany did was educated her. Tiffany told her, you know, um, when she was three years old, her parents left her wherever she's from. I, I don't want to say a country and be wrong. So I'm just going to say where, wherever she's from. Her parents left her there with her grandfather, with well, her grandparents, for three years. So they came to the States, and then, you know, when she was six, they sent for her. So she got on the plane by herself and flew to New York. And she also said, you know, she didn't speak, a, you know, she didn't speak any English. And when she went to school, the kids, they made fun of her because of her eyes. And that's actually where the episode ended, you guys. Um... So far for the first episode, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, I know people going to be like, ooh, I know people are going to be saying the same thing like with Atlanta. It's not it's not good without Leanne. I'm cool without Leanne. I really I could I could care less. I couldn't care less. Keep it that's the correct term to use. I couldn't care less. Do I like Leanne? Yes. Am I fine with her being off the show? Yes. I don't give a fuck, to be quite honest with you. Don't give a fuck. But yeah, that's Real Housewives of Dallas, you guys. Be sure to like this video, leave your comments, and subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video, and until the next one, you guys, do me a solid favor. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, and you guys, if you're going to, please do not drink and drive. It is New Year's Eve. I want to see, I want everybody to return back to the channel in one piece. Also, you guys, one more time, go over there and subscribe to the Planner channel, Jerome's Planet. I am going to remember to drop the link in the description bar below for you guys. And I will see you guys again for a life after lockup. Bye guys.